Jessica Jane Robinson, also known as Miss Alameda, Recycle Woman, and Resilience. I started off as Miss Alameda competing in the Miss California pageant in a gown recycled from a wedding gown that I bought for only $35 at the Goodwill. By changing the original structure, I created a new gown and blinked it out with a rose made from a plastic bottle symbolic for the plastic in the ocean. The gown is 75% upcycled, meaning that 75% came from the wedding gown from the Goodwill and 25% of the material is new. I knew I wanted to do something for the environment, so I created Recycle Woman. A superhero working to keep recyclables and compostables out of the landfill. And I recruited and trained Alameda restaurants to separate their food waste and food soiled paper into the compost bin. And their bottles and cans in the recycle bin, saving the planet and saving them money too. I have worked with the Alameda schools to help them recycle and compost and inspire the youth to do the same. And now I've become resilience. A new character fighting climate change. So what I want you to know about climate change, what it is, why you should care, and what you can do about it. What is global warming, also known as climate change? Every day the sun heats the earth, and every night much of this heat leaves the earth's atmosphere, and we cool down. Have you ever gotten into a parked car that's been sitting in the sun all day? Then you've experienced the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect keeps the earth warm. It's like a blanket. The problem comes when we have too much greenhouse effect and the planet becomes too warm, melting polar ice caps and causing extreme weather conditions. So I wanted to know more about climate change and how it affects California. We're gonna see more fire, more insect outbreak and damage to our forests, which in turn will lead to more fire. Okay. Um, and we'll also see more drought. We'll see water stress on uh, our um, farms. That is, there'll be a lack of irrigation water. Um, so we're gonna see the economy of the state impacted by um, uh, loss of water supply. Um, we're gonna see less snow in the mountains, possibly more rain along the certain coastal regions but um, overall, a net loss of available water for uh, farming, for irrigation. And of course, that will affect domestic water supply as well. Why should we care about climate change? To get a local perspective, I spoke with Alameda Mayor Marie Gilmore. The emissions from waste were reduced by approximately 17% because the city and our citizens are recycling and composting, um, in fact, at unprecedented levels. I'm just very proud of our community. So we're composting more and throwing away less. And the more we recycle, the less goes to the landfill, and the less harmful um, methane gas that gets produced. So we're very excited about that. Behold Alameda, California, and meeting its own very progressive zero waste goal. Alameda leads many other Bay Area cities in its recycling efforts. But for most Alamedans, it goes beyond the status and impressive statistics they've achieved. They look for quality items that are either reusable or recyclable. Yes, even in Alameda's highest social circles, reusable grocery bags, lunch bags, and travel mugs are fashion accessories. Here's a graphic showing what Alameda would look like with one meter sea level rise all the way to 10 meters. I'm standing here at the Port of Oakland, hub of shipping and commerce, all of which is threatened by sea level rise. All of the infrastructure, piers, cranes, railway lines, buildings, all which will be underwater. Think of the expense of moving all of this. What can we do about climate change? Well, San Francisco definitely would be hugely impacted, particularly the airport. Um, parts of the financial district, um, a lot of the oceanfront areas would, would see a lot of flooding um, and it would cost San Francisco hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, to uh, mitigate some of those uh, problems. I know particularly around the airport, either relocating the airport or modifying the airport so it could still stay in operation would be a huge expense for San Francisco. 
I think one of the best things people can do that a lot of people don't know um, is really to get their organics, all their food scraps and landscape debris out of the landfill. One thing is certain to me, that the pyramid's inverted. As opposed to waiting for the guy or gal on the white horse to come save the day and sell down a vision of how we can solve this, i.e. looking to Washington, D.C. to fix the paradigm of how we live and advance and prosper in a world where the earth is radically changing uh, in terms of its temperatures. People say, well, okay, you know, it's hyperbole. Hold off. Last hundred years, we've seen a half foot rise just at the bridge. So it's already happening, sea level rise. People don't get that. Literally, it's about a half foot higher than it was the last turn of the previous century. And now you're seeing this accelerating. That's right. And you, you saw with all the international scoring in terms of expectation of, of sea level rise, uh, most of the interagency councils that put this together never assume mass ice melts. They assume more seasonal ice melts from the mountainous ice. They didn't talk about ice sheets falling off. And that's where there's a discrepancy between the baseline, which was three feet, to concern now six foot rises uh, within a century or so. Uh, so again, this is not science fiction. You cannot even believe in global warming, but you can't deny these broader trends, fact, with real evidence, and now the accelerated trends, facts, with real evidence. As I learned about the impacts of climate change, I decided to use my platform as Miss Alameda in the Miss California pageant to help create awareness locally. I started working with the city and the local recycling company to produce my program, Miss Alameda Says Compost, targeting Alameda restaurants. Food scraps and landfill create methane, which is a powerful greenhouse gas 70 times more damaging than a unit mass of carbon dioxide. Since implementing the MASS program, over 60 restaurants are participating, reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 1,300 metric tons per year. A simple change at this restaurant in Alameda is already keeping 44.43 tons of methane out of the atmosphere every year. So the restaurants are beginning to do their part. What can the rest of us do to reduce our carbon footprint? Well, we can start by becoming conscious consumers and start thinking about what we purchase. I spoke to Julie McQueen, Director of Education Outreach from Green for All. And so the economy is driven on energy and it's one of those things where you're like, well, what does oil have to do with food or whatever? Um, or what does it have to do with my CD? Or, wait, people don't use CDs anymore. What does it have to do with my computer, right? Uh, but energy is behind everything. Um, anything, uh, to, to make anything, to move anything, to build anything, it requires energy. Dara O'Rourke, environmental scientist at UC Berkeley and co-founder of goodguide.com, talks about thinking and research before we buy. The issue is that um, shopping better, more consciously, can reduce the damage we're doing through overconsumption, but ultimately we have to shift to more sustainable consumption and more sustainable production. And it's not just about buying or not buying stuff, but what we do after we buy it. Darby Hoover from the Natural Resource Defense Council has this to say about packaging, products, and pollution. Um, another thing I think I've been seeing a lot recently is people are increasingly aware of what our trash is doing in our oceans. So the issue of marine plastic pollution, especially in coastal cities like San Francisco, is getting more and more awareness. And people are starting to think about, do we really want to be using non-renewable fossil fuel source material to make a package that's designed to be used once and then thrown away? And of course, when we do use those, they should be recycled and not end up in the ocean. But it's also a, a problem that's getting a lot of people to rethink our disposable culture and how we use items that are designed to be thrown away. Okay. You know, if we use recycled materials to make new products and packages, we save energy, we save water, we save natural resources, we reduce global warming pollution, uh, we save landfill space. Uh, for example, if you take recycled aluminum and make that into new products, uh, you use 93 times less energy than you would if you went to the virgin bauxite ore to make, new, to make aluminum products. So you, in using that much less energy, you're producing that much less global warming pollution. So buying products made from recycled materials and packaging that is also made from post-consumer materials can save energy and resources too. 
Also, we can be thoughtful consumers by researching what we buy through websites like goodguide.com. Again, Dara O'Rourke. A consumer can set a filter on Good Guide that says that their key issue is climate change, for instance. And they can screen the world of products and companies through that filter of, does this product come from a company that is serious about climate change? Patty Moore, a recycling expert, thinks a lot about how to get people and products from here to there. A lot of what you see with how to be green these days is all about what you can buy to make yourself greener. Um, when I think it should be more about what you you should not buy. The production of food is one of the biggest things that that uh, impacts greenhouse gases. Um, so we shouldn't be telling people to worry about a plastic bag or a paper bag or their own bag. What we should be telling people is you need to think about what you're putting in that bag. Buy local. Don't buy more than you need. Don't waste food um, because that's going to have a much bigger impact on on uh, the environment than what choice of container you put it in. You need to walk, you need to take fewer trips, you need to carpool, all those things we've been hearing about, but they require a personal choice and a personal sacrifice. If it, you know, it doesn't really have to be a personal sacrifice. Um, if you think about it, we're being told we need to get more exercise and we're being told that biking or walking is better and, and so we have two goods that we can do with one choice. How can people help fight climate change in their own community? John Hardy from UC Berkeley has some advice on voting with the planet in mind. Vote for politicians who understand the problem and um, uh, urge your representatives to take action to deal with the problem. Action means things like uh, regulations to uh, reduce uh, fossil fuel use. It means um, bringing about um, behavioral changes that lead us to consume more wisely and less. Um, but those things don't happen just on their own. Education is necessary, but it's not enough. We also need politicians uh, at the local, the state, and the federal level uh, taking actions that are necessary to bring about these changes. So I would say get politically involved, join organizations that are putting pressure on the political system, and uh, educate your neighbors and friends. I see this from a solution perspective, bottom up. I see local communities taking charge, community leaders, not just political leaders, uh, but all of us making decisions about the way we change and produce and consume energy uh, and making decisions uh, that ultimately become the sum, sum total of the big decisions that ultimately will tip this in the right direction. Uh, so when I think of the issues of climate change in the context of sea level rise, I look at it from a localized perspective. Uh, one size does not fit all. California, for example, projects sea level rise, significant sea level rise, and just in the next few decades, upwards of six inches. But that is not equal along the coast. It's very different in the southern part of the state than it is in the northern part of the state because of the unique topography and frankly because of the fault lines along the northern part of the coast here in California. So every solution has to be tailored locally. So California set forth in the Coastal Act a requirement for local solutions. The way I look at everything is go local. If you don't like the way the world looks when you're standing up, stand on your head, go local. You'll see amazing things happen. Because when I look at the world, you look at total consumption. Total consumption is nothing more than the sum total of all local consumption. So it's so important when we look at any problem, is just break it down into its bite-sized piece and say, all right, what is it we're doing at the local level, particularly urban areas? where we're seeing massive urbanization, more people on the planet living in urban centers than suburban and rural areas combined. That happened 2005, six or seven. So San Francisco, we put together the most aggressive 
a recycling program in America, first city in America to require composting. Uh, we have recycling rates that are now over 80%. I remember starting when I was a supervisor, no one thought we'd reach 50%. They said, that's audacious, that's crazy. And so when I left, we said, all right, we're going to go to zero. Success leaves clues. And it's important to prove something because people assert things all the time. And the key is to prove it. And what's great about a city is you can prove a concept. And people can go, hmm, that worked. Or you over-promised here, you under-delivered there, you under-promised here, and you over-delivered there. That went faster than you thought, that went slower. And people can look at that over two, three years and go, geez, the sky didn't fall in when you required composting. Maybe we down in Santa Monica are thinking, you know, we can do a plastic bag ban too. It worked in San Francisco. Plastic, we worked in San Francisco. And I did the same thing. I was stealing ideas from mayors, not only across the country, but around the world. Mm -hmm. and, hey, it worked in Amsterdam. It worked in South Africa and, you know, Cape Town. It worked wherever I can find a great idea. I wanted to take it. So that's the great thing about cities, just leading the way. It's the great thing about California, leading the way on AB 32, 33% renewable standards. And everything else we're doing in terms of Title 24 and leading the charge on requiring automobiles to be alternative fuel that had an impact on the national and we need to raise that bar and step up our game in order to even come close to the ominous projections of an 80% reduction by 2050. Again, I think a first step is sort of seeing what your city's doing mm -hmm. um, and, and um, you know, pushing them either, uh, you know, I think it's two things, you know, helping, the, if, if they're doing great work, then, you know, making sure people know about it, lifting it up, taking part in it, and, and if they need to be pushed, you know, uh, pushing local uh, governments to do more and to be better. Um, and, and just, you know, and that can sometimes just be, you know, organizing, you know, 50 people to call and say, hey, we want recycling, why don't we have it, and we really need it. You know, it doesn't have to be a massive thing. Um, it can be something simple, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of this is the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Ruth Abbey from Community Action for Sustainable Alameda tells us about finding other people who care as much as you do. I think the most important thing is to find other people like yourself who are really enthusiastic about a project and get together and have people power. Uh, and you can do something on the local level with your city council or with your school district. You can start on the small scale and get grants and, um, and, and do things on a voluntary basis. And then you can also work on public policy and um, you know get city councils to pass ordinances or like in the Alameda County, have an initiative that's countywide. And you can even work on state and federal leg uh, legislation. And by working together at the local level, that's the most important way to get started, is to find people like yourself who really want to make a change and make a difference and just work hard and get it done. So there you have it, straight from the experts, who happen to be people just like you and me. Just like you, they care about what's happening to our planet, what our impact is on the planet, and what we can do to solve climate change and turn the tide. We all can be superheroes in the battle for the Earth. I promise to keep doing my part as resilience, and I know with your help, we can stamp out our carbon footprint, slow climate change, and reverse our negative impact to positive. We have the power. I don't want to be somewhere, scraping the walls of freedom. People love recycling. They made fun of me like nothing I had ever done when we were car composting when I was mayor. And we had cartoons, people would talk about garbage police and arrest you if you're not me taking C. Yeah, you were making fun of me. No, 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 okay, no, no. I was like, you were doing yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I'm a recycle so woman. So I, right, like, crazy woman, right? Even my family thinks I'm like a police officer yeah, and then, in the house. And now I'm you look like a damn hero. Now I'm always like, what's up? Yeah, you know, you were leading into it. Now it's like no big deal because right. other cities are following suit. And it's great, you know how you do it, and we all know this. The answer all is every question you possibly can ask them, and every question you've asked, the one answer is the kids. Because the kids are the change. And I know that's cliche, it's real, and I hate even saying it. But when you want to change behavior, educate kids, and then they'll educate their parents. And we did the composting ban, we're like, okay, forget all the editorials and all the cartoonists and all the fancy adults. We went to the schools, and we're like, this is really cool. This is dirt. Guess where the dirt came from? Your lunch. And they're like, no, it did. And they were like, well, check this out. When you're done with your lunch, throw it in this little green bin. I'm like, yeah, so. And then check this out a few months later. It comes back as soil. And we plant the soil and we grow these vegetables. Like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. 
And then they're running home saying, wow, man, this composting is amazing. I was like, what's composting? And that's how recycling happened in this country. Started with the kids, educating the adults. And it's fun. The kids have fun with it. They're learning stuff. The environment's improved. And that's why I'm hopeful. Yeah. Hopeful.